Okay, so uh, let's start talking about enthalpy, which the technical definition of enthalpy is that it is enthalpy, which we abbreviate as H, is the internal energy of the system plus the product of the pressure times the volume. That's what enthalpy is. Okay, and just like energy is the capacity to do work, doesn't really tell you much about energy. Enthalpy is equal to the internal energy plus the product of the pressure times the volume. Doesn't really tell you much about enthalpy, does it? Okay, but that is its technical definition. All right. So really, if we want to get uh, into talking about really what enthalpy is, uh, let's first start talking about change in enthalpy, because that's usually, just like we're interested in the change uh, in internal energy of a system. I know, isn't it? Jared just told me that last week, and he's like, try to see if you flip it over, if that will erase. And he was absolutely right. Oh, <laughs> Jared just changed my life. Yeah. All right. Okay, so delta H, that's why I didn't even want to try it. I was going to try it over the weekend. I'm like, no, I got to try it with everybody here so they can see how awesome it's going to be. All right, so delta H equals, okay, now just the change in energy plus pressure. This is going to be enthalpy. This is going to be at constant pressure, not constant volume a constant pressure, so the volume can change, the pressure won't, so delta H equals delta E plus P delta V. Okay, well we know we have an equation for delta E, right? So delta E is also, we can break that up into the heat plus work. Right, because delta E equals Q plus work. Those are the two ways that energy could be transferred. <coughs> All right. Plus P delta V. We also have a, an equation for both heat and work. We'll keep heat as it is. But what's the equation for work? work equals negative P delta V, right? We used that last time. So let's plug that in there. So now we got delta H equals heat minus P delta V plus P delta V. Oh, this is going to be so nice. And what do you see happens when we broke that uh, down for work this equation? They cancel out. A negative P delta V and a positive P delta V equals zero. So that cancels out. So now we have delta H, which is our change in enthalpy equals Q, or heat transfer. Now, of course, when we uh, are talking about change in internal energy or change in enthalpy now, as we transition to talking about change in enthalpy, we're usually talking about a chemical reaction, even though it could be a physical process. Okay, So this is really change in enthalpy for a reaction. And this is to e equal to the heat transferred by that reaction, so heat of the reaction. Okay. So that is really what enthalpy is. Okay, if we had to come up with a like definition of enthalpy, instead of just these equations, we would say it's the heat of the reaction. How much heat is transferred by a reaction?
Now this isn't the same thing as internal energy change. Internal energy change is the sum of the heat transfer and the work transfer. Both, those are the two ways that energy can be transferred. Okay. Uh, this is just the heat of the reaction. But a lot of times, this is enough to tell us a lot of information about the overall internal energy change, okay? Especially if a system's not doing any work or very little work, all right? So if the system doesn't do any work, Mm -hmm. Purple. If work equals zero, delta H is the same thing as delta E. Obviously, if work is being done, the system is doing some pressure volume work, they're not going to be the same. Okay? No getting around <coughs> But for a lot of chemical reactions, uh, they are very equivalent, or very equivalent, and so most of the time that's what we're interested in, is in the enthalpy of the reaction. Okay? There's a lot of chemical reactions going on in your body right now. Okay? Uh, most of them are not doing any work, and so enthalpy is the same as internal energy change. Uh, and so that's usually good enough. Now the only other thing I want to... Um, amend to this is for this equation. So it's called the heat of the reaction, the enthalpy change, and it is equal, delta H is equal to the heat of the reaction, Q, right down here, but it is an extensive property, meaning that it depends on the amount of material, okay? If you burn one mole of propane, you get so much energy out. If you burn two moles of propane, guess what? You get twice as much energy out. Right? And so when we uh, put this into an equation where we're going to have to calculate it, we see that delta H for the reaction equals the heat of the reaction divided by the number of moles. And that is our new handy dandy equation. That we can use. It is a Q. It's supposed to be a Q. Better? Worse? Worse? Thanks. You're always on my side. All right. So that's what we can also calculate if we want to get a measure of the potential energy change or energy change of a reaction is enthalpy. All right, so it turns out the signs for enthalpy change are gonna tell us a lot as well, okay? And in fact, we have names for the different types of reactions depending on their sign, and you're probably very familiar with these already, endothermic and exothermic, okay? Endothermic. Well, let's start out with the other one you probably are more familiar with or use a little bit more often. What does the term exothermic mean? What's that? Heat from outside. It's giving off heat. It's transferring heat to the outside or, of course, the outside. What will we call that in this unit, this chapter? The surroundings, okay? So an exothermic reaction is a reaction that transfers heat to the surroundings. Okay, so if we drew our box And we drew a bigger box because there's no way I'm going to write the reaction in there. So we go from a reaction to the surroundings. Heat goes from the reaction to the surroundings, or a system to the surroundings. Now if the reaction is our system, and it's transferring energy to the surroundings, transferring heat, is it gaining or losing energy? Losing. Losing energy via heat. 
what should be the sign for its change in energy? Negative. Negative. And that's the same thing for its change in enthalpy, which is a direct measure of its change in internal energy. Okay, so delta H is negative for exothermic reactions. Endothermic reactions, what's going on with an endothermic reaction? It's going inside or it's gaining energy. Heat's transferring from the surroundings to the system. Or a reaction that absorbs heat from the surroundings. So if we draw our boxes, we got a reaction, it's absorbing, so heat's coming from the surroundings to the reaction, to the system. Now if it's absorbing heat, is it gaining or losing energy? Gaining, of course. So what should be the sign? What should the sign be? Positive. So yeah, so delta H and delta E is positive for an endothermic reaction. <coughs> Alright, so of course, a uh, pretty standard example is a combustion reaction. Gives off heat if you did not know. Actually, I think Troy's kind of just being lazy. Like, oh, we need an exothermic reaction. How about a combustion reaction? So, hey, of course, that transfers energy to stomach. Here's a good endothermic reaction. Actually, it's, uh, most of these are physical processes. So this would be an instant cold pack. Okay. Uh, most of those um, are essentially, when, they're, when you're ready to set them off, they're, they're, there's two, basically, membranes in those. There are two, pa two packets, okay? One has uh, water in it, so that's a liquid, and then there's some ionic compound, okay, that they're separated by a membrane, all right? And it's like a carbonate or some type of ammonium compound could do that, okay? And so when you're ready to use the instant cold pack, you snap it, and you break that membrane, and then the ionic compound dissolves in the water, and it turns out it takes energy to dissolve that ionic compound, there, which shouldn't make sense. What do ionic compounds do when they dissolve in water? Dissociate, right? So they separate. So that cation and anion that have an ionic bond, that they're attracted to each other, it takes some energy to break that ionic bond, to remove that cation and anion. And so where does it get the energy to do that? That's the system dissolving, the ionic compound dissolving, it needs energy. Where's it going to get that energy from? Surrounding. The surroundings, okay? So if you have a boo-boo, you break the instant ice pack, your boo-boo's the surroundings. And your boo-boo's going to give energy to the ionic compound, that technical term boo-boo. Um, but that would be the surroundings. So you're just going to transfer energy to that. And of course, uh, if it's transferring energy, it's losing heat, the temperature's going to go down, it gets cold.